Hello everyone and welcome to Provis Gaming and a brand new Democracy 3 series, this time featuring the new Electioneering expansion. At the time this video will be going up, it will be, let's see, July 6th, and July 7th is the release day, so a big thank you to Positech Games for providing me this expansion free of charge early so I can get some content out for you guys, and of course be sure to take a look at it in the Steam Workshop if it interests you. So we're going to be playing another series, we're going to use up this expansion pack, we're going to show off some of the mechanics. But uh, at the same time, because I haven't had to do this yet, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Clones and Drones expansion pack. So that this time around, unlike my previous series, you're going to have all expansion packs active, all four, ready to go. So that should be pretty fun. We're going to be playing as France today, because hey, why not? France is a semi-presidential republic and the largest country in Western Europe. Uh, also, I believe, the... Um, most, uh, yeah, it does say that, actually. Most visited country in the world. Lots of tourism in, uh, in France, which we might be able to use to our advantage for an economy. Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, Ehu, um, so yeah, as far as France, I usually have a theme before I go into a series. And you might be wondering, well, what's my theme going to be for France? Am I going to be playing capitalist and conservative and uh, atheist or something? Like that? What am I going to do? I don't know. The answer is, who knows? Absolutely no idea. Because they added a new feature in the game... Uh, for fundraising for your political party, and you want to pay attention to the sympathies, the political sympathies of those top donors. So this time around, I'm going to be uh, tailoring my country and my approach based off of the top donors. So I have no idea what kind of France I'm going to create this particular series. It is just as much a mystery to me as it is to you, and I'm looking forward to finding out what we're going to do. We will be playing as the party... For popular people. You gotta be popular, man. Reminds me of that song from Wicked. Uh, by Kristen Chenoweth. You're gonna be going against the regressives. There we go. It's the party for popular people against the regressives. So, by default, the term length is five years, which, by the way, kind of flies in the face as what some other people were theorizing in my uh, previous campaign, the Holy United Kingdom, that uh, it starts off at four in order to appeal to an American demographic that are, is used to four-year uh, term lengths. No. No, the default here is five. So I don't know why the UK's default was four if it's supposed to be five. Maybe I messed something up and didn't pay attention. I don't know. But there is, there is a default of five, so you're good. Term limit by default is also at two. There is no hurricanes, earthquakes, compulsory voting, or a monarchy. That's fine. Political apathy is pretty low. 40%? I mean, that's a lot of people who are not inclined to vote. So we're going to have to be careful about that. We're not going to touch any of the other defaults, though, so that people are better able to follow along. And let's begin our campaign in France. Congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to the new job. 65 million citizens. GDP and health are terrible. Unemployment is quite high. But, interestingly enough, education, poverty, and crime are all looking pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, so let's take a look at the starting lineup. We start off with the Egalitarian Society. That means our quality is very high. And as a result, everyone is a little bit happier. So that's going to look pretty good for us in the early game polls. It's not really a useful uh, modifier in the early game. It doesn't really do anything aside from helping your elections. But hey, why not? I'm not going to say no to it. Let's hope we can keep, uh, keep it. Um, we also have the Uncompetitive Economy, which does suck. We're going to need to improve our productivity significantly in order to get rid of that. We have pollution. Uh, not a ton of pollution, but that's because the environment is not good enough. And by the way, in Clones and Drones, I'm going to have to show you guys some content you may not have seen before, at least not on this channel. But uh, Clones and Drones does have some climate change aspects to it. So the environment is actually more important with this expansion than it is in previous ones. Electioneering, it makes no difference, but Clones and Drones, definitely it does. Oh, the dang Doctor Strike is back, my nemesis! Yeah, if you watched my uh, previous playthrough as the whole United Kingdom, you know that this thing was the bane of my existence. Cost me two turns to get rid of this darn thing. It's actually really hard to get rid of as a socialist. Not as hard as a capitalist. All you have to do is just um, get rid of basically state health care and focus on the private sector. And the free market will take care of the rest. But for a socialist country that relies very heavily on state health care services, this is pretty devastating. It's going to be hard to get rid of. We also have obesity. Again, that is also affecting our health. The asthma epidemic, affecting productivity, making parrots unhappy, and organized crime. Which is just barely over the start, uh, the start trigger. So we're going to have to find some ways to get rid of that. All in all, actually not a terrible starting set of events for France with the exception of the Doctor Strike. That really does suck. 
But okay, yeah, let's find out what direction we're going to be taking France. If I click on this button, we'll see some new stuff. So you can see here, this is the electioneering tab. It has replaced parties over here. And it still shows basically your activists, the number of people who are registered in your party. Currently, zero. Our opponents, the regressives, have 12 million members registered for their party, but no activists to boost the vote. Obviously, this will change over time, especially if we are an effective leader in France. The rest of this, however, is completely new. Now, manifestos and speeches, we can't do anything with for a while. Manifesto is basically a campaign promise. You usually make this just before you get elected to try and drum up some extra votes, and then people will hold you to it, expecting you to actually fulfill your promises, and if you don't, well, then their trust in you is kind of shaken. And then the speeches is exactly what you think it is. It is just giving a speech, trying to excite a particular uh, voter base, and you can only do this right before a, an election, so can't do anything with these. Fundraising is what we're interested in right now. So campaign funds over time. So this is something completely new, different. Uh, basically, there are some rich donors in your country, and uh, depending on who they like, they will donate money to a party, either yours or your opponent's, and then when the election comes, it'll automatically spend that money on like some uh, ad campaigns and so on to, to get some extra votes. How much of a difference does it make? Not a ton, actually, surprisingly. I think it's only like 2-3% maybe, but we'll find out more when we get to the actual election. Uh, currently, the top party donors are Sophie Masson, or M Masson, I, pff, I don't freaking speak French, Delphine Duval, Cyril Bernard, and Stephanie Girard. Girard, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, I'm butchering all these names. I don't speak a lick of French. I'll just tell you that up front. So, religious and socialist are the sympathies for this person. She's very generous. We have socialist commuter, environmentalist and socialist, and then retired and liberal. So, three socialists right off the bat. Okay, that's important to know, because that means that we really do want to go socialist if we want to court the big money in France. Um, I think I might go for a liberal socialist playthrough. We may upset the religious people a little bit, but I don't think there's much we can do about it. Environmentalist, yeah, we can make them happy. Retired, commuter, sure. So yeah, we're going to go for liberal socialist this time. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and make this the theme. We're going to try to turn France into a proper democratic socialist nation. European style. Yeah. I don't know a ton about what a democratic socialist nation is actually supposed to be, but you guys can tell me in the comments section. That's what you guys are good at. I'll do the best I can. And here's the other tab that we need to pay attention to. This is perceptions. Again, this doesn't really take uh, any effect until the election, but what electioneering as a expansion does is basically we are taking the rational voters and adding a certain level of irrationality to them. Perceptions, feelings, these things now matter to the undecided voters. So for example, floating voters here who have not made up their mind, these perceptions can swing their vote. There, see, that's how it works. There are three different categories, trustworthy, strong leader, and compassionate, and certain um, uh, policy choices will boost these. So for example, if you keep your promises, your trustworthy goes up. If you flip-flop on policies, your trustworthiness goes down. Strong leader, right now we are being perceived as somewhat weak, and that is because organized crime exists. If I click this, yep, see, the effect of organized crime is it makes us look weak because we can't deal with the gangs and the mob and whatever else. So we want to get rid of that if we want to be perceived as stronger. We are, however, perceived as pretty compassionate, and that is probably because we have a very socialist country with a lot of welfare. So yeah, now one way you can boost all this is to do a media stunt, which we won't do now, but... If, for example, I were to release my tax returns to show that I am a trustworthy person, that would cost me four political capital, 75% chance of success, and it would improve our, well, likely would improve the perception that I am a trustworthy leader, and therefore win some swing votes. Really, how important is this? Probably about the same level as fundraising. Not a huge deal, but... If you are at a neck-and-neck -neck race with your opponents, and I can see this happening on the higher difficulties, this actually could be kind of useful to get you that extra edge you need in order to win. For us, hopefully it won't be very important. Hopefully this won't be necessary to win. Hopefully we can win the hearts and minds of the French people regardless. We'll find out. But all right, let's begin by taking a look at the economy. We have income, expenditure, deficit is currently 5 billion euros per quarter, and the debt is 675 billion. Okay, that's a little bit much. What are we spending our money on right now? State pensions is the majority of it. State healthcare service, state schools, state housing, military. Okay, so those are the five biggest categories. Uh, can I do something about state pensions? 
No, too much political capital. That said, if we were to reduce this a lot, we would save a lot of money. So it's something I want to do, and I don't even think that state pensions are that good in this game. Um, but we'll see. Uh, what was next on the list? It was state health care. Well, I probably don't want to reduce that. Because uh, if we do that, then the doctor strike will get worse. If I actually spend more money on it, it'll go down. So that's more important to me. Uh, as a socialist country, anyway. What about um, state education? You know, I don't want to get—I don't want to reduce state education. That's going to be too important for us. What else was there? State housing. Ah, that one we can mess with. Okay. So right now, the state is providing some accommodations to those who can't afford to uh, own their own place. So, if I reduce this to save some money, let's say, let's just say 14 billion, and see what happens there. There we go. Private housing becomes more prevalent in the market. Socialism membership goes down by half a percent. So not a lot, not a big deal. The poor have less money, poverty goes up, equality goes down. So some bad things, but it saves us a lot of money, gets rid of the deficit. All in all, I think this is actually going to be a pretty good early start, and it leaves us some political capital in order to do some more stuff. So, okay. Let's go ahead and immediately put out some important welfare programs. This is going to kill the surplus that we just gained, but I think they are early game good to get. Food stamps, for example. I have said before, I think this is one of the best policies in the game. Maybe not so in real life, but definitely in the game. Equality goes up. Actually, compassionate is now tied to this, so the more you spend in food stamps, the more people think you are a compassionate leader who cares about the plight of the poor. So equality going up is not a big deal to us, but poverty going down is. Also a little bit of health. So, yeah. All in all, reducing poverty that much is pretty big for us. We are going to spend the money. 3.6 billion euros per quarter. Again, that's going to cut into our surplus. Pretty much eliminate it, honestly. Um, but we'll see what we can do with it. There is another one like it. Free school meals. Basically the exact same thing, but a cheaper version of the food stamps. We're going to do both. This is a way to improve our health. Actually, more than the food stamps do. So arguably this is even better. And we really do need more health right now. Um, poverty goes down even further. Obesity even goes down because we are controlling what the kids in school eat and they're not getting fat on cheeseburgers. I don't even think that's a French thing. They're not eating so many croissants. Let's say that. Uh, yes. Not eating so many croissants and drinking so much wine. What's the legal drinking age in France? I have no idea. It's not 21, I know that much. Because my wife traveled to France a while back and was able to drink. Anyway, um, yeah, okay. So this is pretty good. It's going to cost us just over a billion euros, so it's cheaper for even better health. One billion euros for a 7.9% increase in health is amazingly good value. We absolutely should do that. I don't know what I just clicked. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, what else is cheap? Uh, we could do the tourism ad campaign. That would improve our tourism, which is good for the GDP. Uh, some of these would increase our capitalism membership. Health food subsidies could do something, I guess. Uh, what if we do community policing, though? This is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do community policing. Uh, if we are going for a liberal playthrough, this is one of the best policies you can get. So we'll go ahead and max this out. Two billion. Liberals love it. Crime goes down, racial tension goes down, but most importantly, liberalism membership goes up by 9.37%. That's great, because it also reduces conservative membership by 9.37%. Not bad. If you're going for a liberal playthrough, you absolutely need to get community policing. It's relatively cheap, it costs very little political capital, and it is great for controlling the vote. Definite must-have. We're going to save our next two points, though, and see if we can't use that to get rid of the state pensions next turn. Let's see what happens. Ban alcohol advertising. There was a proposal for a law to outlaw the advertising of alcohol on television. Although it would remain legal to advertise on radio, billboards, and other means, a TV ban is seen as a potential way to reduce alcohol intake by our citizens. Do you reject it or approve it? Well, my first inclination is to worry about the alcohol abuse event, but we don't have alcohol abuse. In France right now, we're one of the few countries that does not start with it. So I'm going to go ahead and reject the ban. I don't entirely know... Well, I feel like this might make capitalists happy. Maybe the youth as well. What would this do? Probably make parents unhappy and increase alcohol consumption? Or reduce it, I should say. Reduce alcohol consumption. Now nah, we'll just reject the ban. If I need to, I can always just do an alcohol awareness campaign. We'll be fine. Right now it's projecting us to have 0% of the vote. I'm not sure how much I believe that. But that would be kind of scary. So, yeah, let's 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 change that post-haste. Uh, I do have a deficit of 8 billion euros per quarter again, though. So, we should reduce the state pensions. And I think I'm just going to reduce them down to zero. Yeah. 
Uh, the Retired will be very unhappy by this, but the Retired, honestly, are a very easy voter group to court. Um, just do a couple little things, and they'll be thrilled with you, and you, they'll never really question you. So I'm not too worried about the Retired. Private pensions will instead fill the gap in the free market, and the Retired will have a different way of getting their income. Poverty, unfortunately, will go up, but we did just take several different measures to reduce it, so I'm not too worried. And we will lose some socialists, but in the process, we're going to save somewhere on the order of 32 billion euros per quarter, which is really, really good. So I have no real qualms with that. Children's food. A law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food sold to children, including food sold in fast food restaurants and, of course, food served in school. This is likely to incur costs for the food retailers. This is something you need to consider, by the way. In the Clones and Drones expansion, uh, food pricing is actually a significant factor. We'll go over that a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and regulate the children's food because we desperately need better health. But this is going to have some negative impacts. Oh yeah, we're at 76% of the vote. Wow, 76% of the vote already. Really? Goodness gracious. That's, um... <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for turn two. Having 76%, I feel pretty good about our early game chances. Anyway, uh, yeah, so where is food prices? Does this impact unemployment? There it is, food price, okay. So basically, this is only having an impact on obesity, and I, for now at least, and I'm not sure if it is or ever is going to have anything else, any, any other impacts, I should say. Hmm, apparently food pricing being low is reducing obesity? I don't think I believe that. Unless by low, we're saying that it's super duper expensive. I'm not too sure. If we played with it a little bit more, I'm sure that'll change. But in Clones and Drones, because climate change is a significant factor, and that messes with uh, your water shortages, your available land, and so on, sometimes that causes food pri uh, prices to spike, because you can't grow enough food, and that causes serious, serious problems. So, we'll keep an eye on that over time. Alright, what else should we do? Um, well, I need to continue improving the GDP. It is ticking up slightly, and the big reason for that is because I do have a surplus, so I'm paying off some debt. But I think we need to dip into the capitalist arena a little bit to try and get some more GDP. And a good way to do that would be the Enterprise Investment Scheme. This is one of my favorite policies when I'm playing capitalist. It does, however, have a significant penalty to socialism membership. So since we're playing as socialists, this may seem a little problematic, but one of the things about a democratic socialist nation is it really does rely upon uh, the the capitalist market, the free market, to really take off before, so that they can tax the crud out of it and then distribute the wealth in the form of welfare programs and public services, right? So in a way, it's I honestly think that democratic socialism sometimes has less to do with actual socialism and more of a a bastardized version of corporatism, but what do I know? Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to rely a little bit on the capitalist side of things to get our GDP going, and then later we can get rid of this if we need to. So if I max this out, socialism membership goes down by nearly 8.5%. That's really bad. But GDP goes up by 5%. That's pretty good. Self-employed will be thrilled. I don't really care about any of that. Self-employed membership going up is good in the short term, but otherwise not a big deal. High earnings going up means the wealthy will get wealthier, but... We'll be taxing the crud out of them, so that actually will in part go into my coffers. Cost me three billion. Worth it in the short term, in the long term, if we need to get rid of it, we certainly can do that. What is our tax rate looking like, by the way? Uh, income tax. Oh my god, 56%. Jeez, France. Last playthrough, people were saying that it was just daylight robbery when I uh, uh, raised it to 50%, but now 56% by default? You French are crazy! That is insane. Good God. Good God. Alright, uh, how, how, how does everything else look? I'm kind of scared to check. 16% uh, corporate tax. Okay, that's not terrible. 16% capital gains. Okay, inheritance is at 24. A little steep, but not too bad. Property is 55! Oh my gosh, it's impossible to own property in France! No wonder the cost of living is so much higher in France than it is in the United States or elsewhere. Sales tax is also pretty high, 26%. Jeez, that's not so good. Petrol tax, 23%. We could raise this up to 42 and not have a lot of problems, but it'll cost us quite a bit of political capital, and right now we don't need the money. So let's find some better things to spend it on. How about, um... Well, I was thinking about doing small business grants. 
but maybe we don't go for that much uh, capitalism membership too early on. Maybe we go for something else like new car subsidies. Yeah, that's relatively cheap, 2.8 billion, not too bad, um, but it will increase the GDP. So the government is going to come along and say, hey, all your clunkers are terrible for the environment. Well, I know you want to get a new car, so tell you what, we'll take some of your tax dollars and give it back to you, although a lot smaller than what you paid up front, and say, hey, go get a better car. So as a result, the environment will go up, asthma epidemic goes down, CO2 emissions goes down, which is good for the global temperature, and oil demand goes down and the GDP goes up by 1.73%. Not as good of a value as the enterprise investment scheme or the small business grants, but it's something. And in the meantime, it helps with the environment. And like I've said, I think the environment in the Clones and Drones expansion is pretty darn important to keep on top of. We're going to be focusing a lot more on that in the early game than I might otherwise have been inclined to do so. Um, and that's going to be important. I think that's going to be really important that we keep that under control. So, we'll see. I got seven points left. What else should we do? You know what? While we're talking about Clones and Drones... Uh, one other thing we need to be considering is the industrial automation, and that's basically uh, robots and automated factories and so on that take the place of human jobs. So it reduces the working week, in other words, less people... Well, let's see. Yes, I think that the higher the industrial automation is, this will go down. Right now, because it's below half, we're getting a longer working week, but eventually this will go down. I suspect productivity will go up quite a bit if we get more industrial automation. The downside is that unemployment also goes up, because the robots are taking your jobs. I mean, at some point, you know, this is this is one of the main reasons that people are really worried about increasing the minimum wage in the United States up to $15, is because uh, companies will decide it is now cheaper to invest in uh, automating, let's say, a fast food restaurant, rather than just hiring more people. And that's already happening, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that places like Wendy's have, have officially announced they're going to be starting to use more of an automated workforce. So people are going to start losing their jobs, the minimum wage jobs, and that's unfortunately something that happens in the economy as technology increases, but it will also happen just over time. So our technology being higher means we are relying more on technology to do things, but also, as time goes on, we're just going to gradually start inventing things. Whether we like it or not, we will be continuing to rely more on industrial automation. In the short term, though, this is a bad thing for us. Because unemployment in the France is already too high, so I want to reduce this. And a good way to do that while making some money would be to take advantage of the automation tax. Technological innovation has led to brilliant inventions. The dark side of industrial automation is that it is leading to job loss. Less jobs means less income tax. To make up for the loss in tax income, the economy ministry has designed an automation tax to be paid by the most advanced companies. Yeah, I mean, this is the dark side of technological advancement. And people keep getting worried about this. They say, oh, no, all this technological advancement means that people are going to lose their jobs. And that's why when the Industrial Revolution was happening, there was a big Luddite movement of people who actually would go around destroying machines because they were destroying their livelihood. And I believe the British government actually had to, uh, like, make it a, a crime. Like, a, was, it a, was it a capital punishment? I can't remember. For destroying machinery. Like, it was a huge deal for doing things like that. And yet, the economy somehow found a new equilibrium. Society changed. Now we produce iPhones instead of, you know, textiles. So, it, it, has, it has its pluses. But it means you really need to keep on top of education in a country in order to make up for the difference. We'll implement it. And I think we're going to have like a 50% tax to start us off. We'll probably want to reduce it later. But for now, this will get me 15.89 billion euros per quarter. Industrial automation goes down, which means unemployment should also go down a little bit. We do lose some technology, which is unfortunate, but we'll find other ways to make up for it. I promise it'll be fine. Okay, we only have one point left. I guess we will move directly on into the next turn. A superhero! Bunny Man! Seems appropriate for France. News stations are buzzing with reports, caped man, blah blah blah, crime goes down, violent crime goes down. I mean, this almost always happens whenever your crime is... Well, actually, our crime is non-existent. This seems to happen in the early game no matter what, is basically what it comes down to. We have a surplus of 57 billion euros per quarter, which is actually quite good, and as a result, our credit rating has been upgraded. You can see that the GDP has been ticking up. That's pretty good. That means more money, more surplus for us. And the more surplus we have, the more we pay off our debt, the better the credit rating is going to get. And honestly, that's one of the reasons I think that it is so important to have a good, strong economy in the early game. The faster you pay off that debt, or at least make some progress toward it, the better. Uh, you, can always, you can always cut down the surplus and reduce taxes or spend it more accordingly later, and that's fine. You don't need a big surplus throughout the whole game, but getting rid of the debt, big, big deal. 
78% of the vote as well. Crime's going down. Poverty is also going down, which is unfortunate. Hmm. We'll find a way to deal with that, I suppose. Um. Hmm. What about, like, uh... Speaking of crime and stuff with the superhero, what about police force? I could increase this. It won't do a ton for crime. Or unemployment. It would cost me a fair bit of money, too. Another two billion. Eh. It's an option. I could always increase the police force. And liberals aren't unhappy with that, but conservatives would be. Uh, the other thing I always overlook is prisons. Basic oh, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and up this. Okay. Yeah, go to extensive rehabilitation. Prisons, I honestly think there's no good reason not to have extensive rehabilitation when in any campaign, because liberals and conservatives both like it. Crime goes down, state employees are happier, and unemployment goes down. Across the board, it's relatively cheap and does only good things, unless you're trying to keep state employee membership down. In other words... Uh, play libertarian, reduce the size of government, which we're not going for today. We're playing democratic socialist, which basically means we are going for a statist, centrist style of play. And uh, I think there actually are some technologies or some policies in this game that allow us to move to a proper democracy, and I'll explore those more as we progress. Um, the other thing I'm really concerned about, though, would be health and the environment. We have 19 points left. That's not a lot. I would like to do some really high-value policies early on. Eh, let's take a look. Health. Slowly ticking up. Regulating the children's food did help. And how's the environment? Actually ticking down, and the big part of that is because we are increasing the GDP. So, okay. What if we go to organic farming? Yeah? That's not so bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and implement that. That'll be 15 points. 2.72 billion euros per quarter. I almost said pounds there. Hmm. You can tell I'm fresh off my UK playthrough. Environmentalists love this. Capitalists do not. Not a big deal. It's overshadowed by the gains we gain uh, through organic farming. Health, however, goes up by 7.45%. Again, 2.72 billion euros per quarter in order to gain 7.45% health is really good value. I would have to spend far, far more than this in order to improve my health in the uh, state healthcare service. Honestly, that's one of the reasons in this game the best ways to improve health are the little things. It's changing what people eat. It's doing campaigns so they're aware of what they're eating. It's the wellness programs and so on. That really works to your advantage. Obesity also goes down because we are just generally eating healthier food. I've actually read some reports that saying organic farming is not quite as good as you might think. Uh, in part because it's pretty much just used by the very rich corporations that can afford to pay the FDA their fees. And maybe some homegrown stuff can't afford to be labeled as organic. But I don't know a ton about that. That's just something I've heard lately. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's not too expensive, and it's going to have huge impacts on our health. I'm a big fan of that. We only have four points left, though. So I think what I should do is some campaigns. Um, no, not tourism, not yet. What about, um, yeah, let's do the healthy eating campaign. 300 million pounds. Not a big deal. It directly attacks the obesity epidemic and increases health by 4.5%. That's even better value than the organic farming. It seems like such a small little thing. It costs like practically nothing, but it does so much for your country. You really want to do these campaigns. You really, really do. I think these come with the um, social engineering expansion. So if you don't have that, you may not find these things and the game's a little bit tougher, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're useful. And the keep the country tidy campaign is exactly the same thing. It costs even the exact same amount, but it improves the environment instead, also makes environmentalists happy, also increases their membership across the board, good things for us. So, okay, that pretty much wraps up this video. Like usual, I will be breaking up this series into year, not by uh, the amount of time that has passed. So, some videos will be long, some videos will be short, but I want to do one full year of gameplay, and there are five in between every election. So, we got four more years to go before I have to worry about getting re-elected, and we will be taking France in a liberal socialist direction, uh, we probably will be focusing a lot on technology, but try to control the industrial automation so we don't have a lot of negative events. Uh, we're probably going to end up getting rid of the religious entirely, if I had to guess. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what else we can do. All right, cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed. If so, then hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you're looking forward to seeing in electioneering. Let me know if you have any suggestions. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.